Okay, good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. The perfect show to kickstart your day, bringing you the top national, international sports and business news. My name is Ashwarya, and these are the headlines. Hours after four senior most judges of the Supreme Court publicly questioned the functioning of the Chief Justice of India, Congress calls it disturbing. BJP accuses Congress of playing politics over an internal matter of the judiciary. Manufacturing sector's robust performance takes industrial growth to 17-month high of 8.4% in November, but retail inflation at 5.21% for December hits prospects of a rate cut. Harvest Festival of Lori is celebrated in North India today. Makar Sakranti and Pongal to be celebrated tomorrow. President Ramnath Kovind and Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu extend greetings. US President Donald Trump says the US extending sanctions relief to Iran for one last time insists US and Europe must fix Iran nuclear deal's terrible flaws. Iran calls the US's action a desperate attempt to undermine a solid deal. And India to take on South Africa in the second test match at a Centurion today. Parthiv Patel and KL Rahul set to make a comeback. India faces a do-or-die situation after losing the first test in the series in Cape Town. A top story this morning, the BJP on Friday night criticised the Congress for stepping into the controversy triggered by four of the senior most judges of the Supreme Court yesterday. Well, after staying clear of the developments through the day, the ruling party insisted that the matters raised by the four judges were essentially an internal matter of the Supreme Court. BJP spokesperson Sambit Patra further said that parties should not politicise issues of judiciary. His remarks were a reaction to Congress President Rahul Gandhi stating that the concerns expressed by the four Supreme Court judges are extremely important and need investigation. The Congress also put out a two-page statement asking Supreme Court judges to jointly discuss the points flagged by four judges of the top court. Bharat. पूरे विश्व में सर्वाधिक लोकप्रिय लोकतंत्र के लिए मजबूत लोकतंत्र के लिए जाना जाता है और जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल स्ट्रक्चर है स्कीम है जो संवैधानिक स्कीम है भारत का उसमें न्यायपालिका अर्थात जुडिशरी का एक सशक्त और एक इंडिपेंडेंट स्थान है आंतरिक विषय जो न्यायपालिका के होते हैं जो जुडिशरी के इंटरनल विषय होते हैं उनको सड़क पर ला राजनीति करने का प्रयास जो कुछ राजनीतिक पार्टी के लोग कर रहे हैं वो अनुचित है यह विषय न्यायपालिका का आंतरिक विषय है अटॉर्नी जनरल ने अपना मंतव्य रखा है इस पर किसी प्रकार का डोमेस्टिक पॉलिटिक्स अर्थात घरेलू राजनीति और वह भी निम्न स्तर की राजनीति कभी भी नहीं होनी चाहिए एंड द सुप्रीम कोर्ट बार एसोसिएशन विल मीट टुडे टू डिस्कस द सिचुएशन राइजिंग आफ्टर ऑफ द अनप्रेसिडेंटेड प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस हेल्ड बाय फोर सीन मोस्ट फोर जजेस ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट द जजेस हु इंक्लूडेड जस्टिस जे चेलामेश्वर जस्टिस रंजन गोगोई जस्टिस मदन बी लोकुर एंड जस्टिस कुरियन जोसेफ क्लेम दैट द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज नॉट इन ऑर्डर The government reacted to the development, calling it an internal matter of the judiciary. In an extraordinary development, four senior judges of the Supreme Court went public against the Chief Justice of India, Deepak Mishra, listing out problems that they claimed are afflicting the country's highest court and putting democracy at stake. It's an extraordinary event in the history of any nation, and more particularly this nation, an extraordinary event in the history of this institution. of judiciary it is with no pleasure you know hearts we were compelled to take this decision to call for a press conference but sometime 
The administration of the Supreme Court is not in order. There are many things which are less than desirable which have happened in the last few months. The four judges who included Justice J. Chelameshwar, the second senior judge after the Chief Justice of India, Justice Ranjan Gogoi, Justice M. B. Lokur and Justice Kurian Joseph claimed that many less than desirable things have happened in the last few months. In their seven-page letter to the CJI that was released to the press, they said it is too well settled in the jurisprudence of this country that the Chief Justice is only first amongst the equals, nothing more or nothing less. We try to collectively persuade the the Chief Justice that certain things are not in order, therefore he should take remedial measures. But since all of our efforts failed, even this morning on a particular issue, four of us went and met the Honorable the Chief Justice of India with a specific, specific request, which we could not unfortunately convince him that we were right and uh, the appropriate decision is to be taken. We couldn't convince him. Therefore, we were left with no choice except to communicate it to the nation that please take care of the institution and take care of the nation. Dismissing questions on whether they had broken ranks by addressing the media, the judges said their action was a discharge of debt to the nation. Whatever Justice Chalameshwar has told you is the whole of it. It's a discharge of a debt to the nation that has brought us here. And we, we think that we have discharged a debt to the nation by telling you what is what. The unscheduled press conference is the first of its kind event in India. Soon after it ended, Attorney General K.K. Venugopal, who was called by the CJI, said the unprecedented move could have been avoided. He also said the judges will now have to act with statesmanship to ensure complete harmony. News agency PTI quoted highly placed government sources saying the issues raised by the four judges are an internal matter of the judiciary. However, they added that the apex court should settle the issue at the earliest as the faith of the people in the judiciary is at stake. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And uh, the decision of uh, four senior most judges of the Supreme Court to ho held, uh, hold a press conference has been termed unprecedented by the legal fraternity. Now, some experts uh, termed it as a shocking, while others said that there could be compelling reasons for such a move. There is no interference by any cortes. If the judge is independent, he is independent. None can control him. Executive means who? Minister? MP? Or anybody? Do you think that an MP will uh, go and tell the chief justice to decide his case accordingly? Will he take the risk? Huh? And the judge says that, uh, oh, he, he had come. What is the, what is the future of that uh, person? डेमोक्रेसी खतरे में कैसे है हमारे पार्लियामेंट चल रहा है हमारा प्राइम मिनिस्टर अपॉइंटमेंट हुई है जजेस हमारे हैं हाई कोर्ट्स चल रही हैं कोर्ट्स लोअर कोर्ट्स चल रही हैं पुलिस सिस्टम चल रहा है लॉ एंड ऑर्डर चल रहा है ये डेमोक्रेसी खतरे में कैसे आ गई तो सिर्फ इन, इन चारों की वजह से खतरे में आ गई डेमोक्रेसी आई पर्सनली थिंक इट इज वेरी अनप्रेसिडेंटेड इन नॉर्मली शुड नॉट बी डन बट these are very responsible and sober judges. If there is a reason, it must be a very, very strong and compelling reason why they have come out. See, in democracy, judiciary's integrity is the most important thing and public confidence is the only thing which keeps judiciary going. Otherwise, judiciary will become just another organ which can be uh, discussed publicly and uh, all comments can be made. Yeah, I think it's a historic press conference. I welcome it. I think it's very well done and as Justice Gogai put it, they have discharged a debt to the nation. I don't want to adopt somebody else's slogan but I think we, the people of India have a right to know what's going on within the judiciary and I welcome this. Well, this is an unprecedented uh, step, it's quite shocking. One never thought that uh, the things will have to come to such a pass. But uh, nevertheless, there must have been some compelling reasons for the senior most judges to have adopted this uh, course of action. I'm sure they exhausted all other possible remedies. Points that have been raised by the four judges, extremely important. They have mentioned 
that there is a threat to democracy, I think it needs to be looked into. It needs to be looked into carefully. Buddhijeevi hain, ye gyanee hain, ye apne ke liye nahi kar rahe hain. Aur toh isi liye jab unho ne aisi baat ke press conference bula ke kaya diye, toh is par samadhan nikal nahi chahiye. Aur kyunki Chief Justice aur inke beech mein kuch sula nahi ho saki aapas mein baith kar, तो मैं समझता हूँ कि आज एक ही बाकी है वो प्रधानमंत्री वो अपनी सेवा का प्रस्तुत करें ये ऐसी बात नहीं है जिससे कि कोई आ, कोई स्थाई नुकसान इस कोर्ट का हो या होना चाहिए मैं समझता हूँ कि जल्द से जल्द आपस में बातचीत करने के बाद समाधान निकल सकता है निकलेगा तो हम लोग सब प्रसन्न होंगे जो आरोप भी जो लगे हैं वो सात पेज का लेटर उन्होंने जो रिलीज किया उसके अंदर ये बात स्पष्ट होता है कि जुडिशरी का भी मैनिपुलेशन हो रहा है और इस तरीके की मतलब वो सरकार के हक में जो मैनिपुलेशन हो रहा है अब ये सवाल है इतने गंभीर है कि इसके अंदर आपको पूरी की पूरी तरीके से इसकी पूरी सफाई करने की जरूरत है Let's uh, get you some other news now. A robust performance uh, by the manufacturing sector took industrial production growth to a 17-month high of 8.4% in the month of November. However, retail inflation proved to be a dampener as it also touched a 17-month high of 5.2% in December. For the manufacturing sector, which constitutes 77.63% of uh, the industrial of industri industri index of industrial production, recorded a growth of 10.2% in November as compared to 4% a year ago. Among the other sectors, uh, pharmaceuticals uh, clocked the highest growth of 39.5%, uh, followed by 29.1% in computer electronic and optical products and a 22.6% in automobile segment. The retail inflation, on the other hand, rose to 5.21% in December on the back of rise in prices of food items, eggs and vegetables. The retail inflation was 4.88% in November. In December 2015, it was 3.41%. The higher figures have dashed hopes of interest rate cut in the near future. The RBI has been asked by the government to keep inflation at 4% plus or minus 2%. The rise now beyond the comfort zone will put pressure on the central bank not to cut interest rate. Good news for India from the health front as India has registered a significant decline in under five child mortality rate. The health ministry has said that the rate of decline has doubled over the past year. Now, as uh, per the sample registration system data, under five children uh, mortality of the country has come down to 39 per thousand in 2016 from 43 in 2015. In a tweet, Health Minister J.P. Nadda said that the results signify that the strategic approach of the government is yielding dividends and the efforts of focusing on how performing states are paying off. He stated that India with a current rate of decline of under 5 child mortality rate is on track to meet the sustainable development goal target of 25 by 2030. A statement by the health ministry also said that most of the states have shown good progress in reduction of under five child mortality from the previous year. Except Chhattisgarh, Delhi and Uttarakhand, which have shown a slight increase over the previous year. Telangana has shown no change in 2016. Now, the government has decided not to print uh, the last page of passports uh, that contains information like names of father, legal guardian, ma mother, spouse and address. Now, the Ministry of External Affairs has decided to print passports in two colours. The passports in orange will be issued to those who require immigration check and passports in blue are for those who do not need immigration checks. Existing passports are printed in blue colours. However, old passports will be valid in the same format till their expiry date. The decision was taken to avoid the problems arising out of a single parents and adopted children. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the 22nd National Youth Festival on Friday via video conferencing. Now, addressing the event, the Prime Minister said that his government wants to encourage the country's youth to become innovators and job creators. Now, referring to the centre schemes like the Mudra scheme, Skill India and Startup India, the Prime Minister said that there are enough platforms to help young entrepreneurs think out of the box and begin something new.
calling on the youth to become job creators and think out of the box, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday assured them that the government is willing to handhold them and help them set up startups. The Prime Minister spoke to the students of Gautam Buddha University in Greater Noida via video conferencing during the 22nd National Youth Festival to coincide with the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekanand. हम स्वामी विवेकानंद की उस बात को याद करते हैं वो कहते हैं युवा वो होता है जो बिना अतीत की चिंता किए अपने भविष्य के लक्ष्यों की दिशा में काम करता है आप सभी युवा जो आज काम करते हैं वही देश का भविष्य की दिशा तय करता है और इसलिए आप जो आज संकल्प लेंगे वही सिद्ध होकर देश को भी अपने संकल्पों की पूरी के लिए तैयार करेगा सिद्धि प्राप्त करेगा द फाइव डे नेशनल यूथ फेस्टिवल इज थीम संकल्प से सिद्धि टू कैप्चर द वाइब्रेंसी एंड फ्रेश परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द यूथ एंड टू प्लेज टू अकम्पलिश द गोल ऑफ न्यू इंडिया Later the prime minister also addressed the inauguration of National Youth Day and Sarv Dharm Sabha in Belgavi Karnataka Swami Vivekanand ji ne kaha tha ye Bharat tum mat bhulna tumhara jeevan apne vyaktigat sukh ke liye nahi hai Aveer garv se bolo ki main Bharat vasi hu और प्रत्येक भारतवासी मेरा भाई है विवेकानंद को मानना है तो भीतर से जाति का द्वेष जाति भेद का जहर निकाल कर बाहर करना होगा खत्म करना होगा सिंस 1985 स्वामी विवेकानंद बर्थ एनिवर्सरी इज सेलिब्रेटेड एज द नेशनल यूथ डे Born as Narendra Nath Datta in an aristocratic family in West Bengal on the 12th of January 1863, Swami Vivekanand was a major force in bringing Hinduism to the status of a world religion in the late 19th century. He introduced Indian philosophies of Vedanta and Yoga to the Western world, and after his 1893 speech at the World's Parliament of Religions in Chicago, he was called the messenger of Indian wisdom to the Western world. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the festival of Lori is being celebrated with a great pomp and show in North India today. Now, one of the first Hindu festivals of the year. It is essentially termed as the, the festival of the farmers, the festival of harvest, whereby the farmers thank the supreme being by lighting a bonf bonfire and asking for blessings. Originally, Lori was celebrated at the night just before winter solstice. It used to mark the coldest night of the year, which was followed by the longest night and the shortest day of the year. Lori is being celebrated today, while Makar Sakranti and Pongal will be celebrated tomorrow. Now, President Ramnath Kovind has greeted the people on the occasion of Lori, Makar Sakranti, and Pongal. In a tweet, the president said that these festivals are associated with harvest and are a moment to celebrate the hard work and enterprise of millions of farmers. He expressed hope that these festivals will bring joy, health, and happiness to all. And Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu said on Friday that nationalism is uniting every individual irrespective of caste, creed and religion. He was addressing a gathering during Sankranti celebrations in Nellore. The Vice President said that Makar Sankranti is a celebration about our association with nature. It is the time to remember our ancestors and elders who have sacrificed many things to give us a better life and life to the next generations. And on to some other news now, Army Chief General Bipin Rawat said that India will not allow its territory to be invaded by anyone, asserting that China may be a powerful country, but India is not a weak nation either. He added that the country was well equipped to handle China's assertiveness. He also said that a hotline will be set up between the Indian and the Chinese armies very soon. From Pakistan and China to terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, Army Chief General Bipin Rawat spoke at length over a number of issues at his annual press meet in New Delhi on Friday. He called for a multi-pronged approach to deal with an assertive China, 
that should include diplomatic and military approaches and partnerships with other countries in the region. He also added that India has an agreement with China to not change status quo, but with reports of road construction in the Bhutanese territory, India had to intervene in the territory of another country. I have always said that our focus on the no has to shift on the northern borders. For too long, we've kept our focus on, on the western front. And now I think time has come for us to also focus on the northern border. So therefore, our infrastructure development in the northern border has to be speeded up. Our requirement of uh, you know the uh, systems that we have, we have to ginger up for that. We have to start preparing for the next kind of warfare that uh, we will be faced with. General Rawat also stressed on the need to manufacture weapons and military equipment in the country under the Make in India initiative. Hence, the army is giving a chance to product even with a lower GSQR or inferior quality than required. He further said the soldiers deployed in advance and strategic border sites will be equipped with modern weaponry in the next two years. He said surveillance has also been increased using drones. Lower GSQR standards. It is to facilitate our industry from taking off. But it does not mean we will continue to accept those standards. What we have said is, we will accept from you what you can give us, even if they don't meet our 100% GSQR requirements. But with the proviso that you continue working further and finally attain a GSQR. And therefore, what we are doing is, for example, there are some artillery guns which have been manufactured. The army chief also accused Pakistan of continuing to support terrorism, saying that the number of cavalry fighting vehicles have been increased to destroy Pakistani posts that support infiltration and added that India's war casualties are lesser than that of Pakistan. With inputs from Pancharan Mishra, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. On to news from the south of the country, Congress President Rahul Gandhi will meet senior party leaders in Delhi today and at this crucial meet, Rahul Gandhi along with senior party officials will review the ground situation and discuss the poll strategy for the state of Karnataka. Also, the proposals related to outreach programs that can be rolled out in Karnataka will be discussed. Now, Karnataka is the key battle state for both the BJP and the Congress, while the BJP is looking for a comeback in the only South Indian state it uh, has uh, ever formed the government. For the Congress, it is the only state with economic and political clout where the party is presently in power. And India has extended a fresh financial assistance of 45.27 million US dollars to Sri Lanka for upgrading its Kanki Santurai harbour into a commercial port. The agreement in this regard was signed on Wednesday between the Export Import Bank of India and Sri Lanka's Ministry of Finance. The harbour's rehabilitation is being done in six phases, out of which four have already been completed under India's assistance. The fresh assistance will be used uh, for the remaining two phases for the rehabilitation of uh, the breakwater and existing pier, the construction of a new pier for the commercial cargo handling and installation of uh, port infrastructure facilities. On to the top international story now, US President Donald Trump says that he is extending a sanctions relief for Iran one last time so that Europe and the US can fix the nuclear deal's terrible flaws. Now, the waiver will uh, suspend U.S. sanctions on Iran for another 120 days. The landmark Iran nuclear accord was signed between six global powers and Iran in the year 2015. It saw Iran agree to reduce its uh, nuclear activity. In return, decades of international and U.S. nuclear-related sanctions were suspended and the U.S. president must sign a waiver suspending them every 120 days. Now, Donald Trump in a statement on a Friday said that this is the last chance and the United States will not again waive sanction in order to stay in the Iran nuclear deal. The White House wants EU signatories to agree permanent restrictions on Iran's uranium enrichment. Under the current deal, uh, they are set to expire in 2025. Okay. Now, Iran's foreign minister, however, has uh, said that it was a desperate attempt to undermine a solid deal European top diplomats also have reasserted their commitment to the deal. The European Union has had uh, an expressed, a very clear position 
on the nuclear deal. Uh, as uh, it was stated, uh, uh, by the 28 uh, European Union uh, Member States Ministers uh, already in October last year and repeated again today. The deal is working, it is delivering on its main goal, which means keeping the Iranian nuclear program in check and under close surveillance. The European Union remains committed to support the full and effective implementation of the agreement. And on to some cricket news. India will take on South Africa in the second test match of the three-match series in Centurion today. Now, Team India will be aiming to assert themselves against the hosts after being defeated in the first test match by 72 runs. The match is scheduled to start at 1.30 p.m. And the ICC Under-19 World Cup cricket will begin in New Zealand from today. The 16-nation event will start with Pakistan taking on Afghanistan and hosts New Zealand facing reigning champions West Indies. Now, India's first match will be on 14th of January against Australia. Three-time champions India will be led by Mumbai batsman Parthiv Shaw. The 22-day tournament will be played across seven venues in the cities of Christchurch, Queenstown, Tauranga and Wangarai. That's all in this edition of news. But before we go, here are the glimpses of a significant moment for women in Saudi Arabia. The kingdom, for the first time, allowed women to spectate a football match, which is kingdom's number one sport. And for the first time on Friday, elated women fans filled into the stadium in the city of Jeddah. This marking among a series of reforms which are intended to modernize the country. We leave you with these visuals. Thanks for watching.